There's no such thing as staying in your own lane in sports. You're engaged in politics. A black American athlete smashes the theory of a Teutonic super race. His name is Jesse Owen. There was no such thing as a civil rights movement. Robinson quietly endured constant ridicule and abuse. As the national anthem played, Smith and Carlos raised their fists and ignited a worldwide controversy. Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired! San Francisco quarterback Colin Kaepernick says he is ready for the backlash after refusing to stand during the national anthem. Sports and politics collided when Kaepernick refused to stand for the national anthem, he says, to highlight black oppression. It's kind of an irony that we find ourselves criticizing now predominantly black athletes for issuing a statement of dissent in the context of the national anthem. Given Francis Scott Key's own racial sympathies or lack thereof, when you go back and look at who Francis Scott Key was, a slaveholder, someone who wrote into the third stanza of the national anthem a phrase glorifying the murder of slaves who were fighting to free themselves, it's easy to understand why African Americans probably have grounds uh, to say, we don't want to stand up and sing this. But that's not what the deal is. African Americans are very much willing to accept what the first stanza of the song has become. But they also insist that we live up to it. The men's 200 meters, another event dominated by the black American sprinters. I was a senior at San Jose State when Tommy Smith came in as a freshman. He was the greatest sprinter that I've ever seen. Smith begins to pour it on and forges to the front. He literally flies toward the tape. I ultimately took a Woodrow Wilson fellowship to do PhD work and came back. And Tommy began to take classes from me. And in those courses, I talked about, here's where sport intersects with education. Here's where it intersects with religion. Here's where it intersects with politics. The athletes of the 1960s are much different than the generation that preceded them. You saw things like Lou Alcindor becoming Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know, Muhammad Ali in refusing to go to Vietnam. The real enemies of my people are right here, not in Vietnam. In 1968, we had already determined that we we're going to organize a movement to focus on the Olympic Games for purposes of bringing to the forefront in the international arena issues of freedom, justice, and equality for black people in this country. Because up until then, the prevailing notion was that black concerns with civil rights stops at the water's edge. We don't air our dirty laundry before the world. Our churches were being bombed, our little girls being killed, our leaders being shot down, while they had black athletes going abroad as goodwill ambassadors to sell the American system. People forget that those Olympics happened just a few months after Martin Luther King had been assassinated. All over America, black ghettos exploded in rage and grief. We want to send the message that we are determined to fight this struggle. We may not be able to get to the forum in the United Nations, but we can get to the Olympic podium. It was widely interpreted as a provocative black power gesture. And in retaliation, Smith and Carlos were thrown off the team and told to get out two days later. They were booed by the Americans who were down there in Mexico. Then when they got home, of course, there was a tremendous reaction. The death threats came rolling in. I was fired for my teaching position at San Jose State. Do you think you represented all black athletes in doing this? Uh, I can say I represented black America. It wasn't simply a reflection of black militancy. It was pointing to the duality of being asked to perform on the world stage as good, loyal Americans in a society that had blood on its hands for the assassination of the foremost articulator of African-American claims to democracy and freedom. you would never see me stand up and tell this thing, National Anthem represents me. Right, right now, it doesn't represent me. And so, in a way, that's the kind of distillation of the position that African-American athletes had been in from the very beginning. 
Jackie Robinson told me that he didn't stand for the national anthem anymore. He didn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. He understood that even after the price that he paid in turning the other cheek, keeping quiet, which was not in his character, very little progress had been made. I think they've got to do whatever they possibly can, but we cannot um, exclude any means except violence. He was the first one to make it clear to me that progress is a very, very tricky kind of a concept. At one level, it's a lot like profit. It comes down to who's keeping the books. Ever need to rent a car fast? Nobody does it better. Hurts leads the others by far. By the time we're looking at the 1980s, it becomes a template for how people can smooth out the rough edges and become more palatable and certainly much more profitable entities by avoiding politics. O.J. Simpson, he stated everybody can't be Martin Luther King. And he was not wrong. If Larry Bird doesn't have to stand up for every hick in French Lick, Indiana, or every poor white guy or woman in Appalachia, why should O.J. have to be representative of every black person who's struggling under racism in this society? Are we really talking about exchanging black orthodoxy for white supremacy. Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Money's gotta be the shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. shoes. You sure it's not the shoes? I'm sure, Mike. What about the shoes? Michael Jordan's arrival as the most identifiable American on the planet, possibly. It's not coincidental he achieved that level of global stardom as being among the least political, least outspoken African-American athletes in that tradition. It became possible or somebody like Charles Barkley to say, I am not a role model. That actually became part of a commercial. Don't expect me to do anything or be anything for your child. I'm just here to dine sumptuously at a table where somebody else's sacrifices and struggles made it possible for me to do so. In 1990, when Harvey Gantt ran against noted segregationist Jesse Helms in North Carolina, Jordan refused to weigh in and refused to endorse Gantt. The dictates of the market were more important than the dictates of civil rights, at least in his own personal calculations. That really became the mold for a generation of African-American athletes. Oh, say, can you see? Sports is a mass phenomenon, almost by definition. And in a democracy or anywhere that there's a mass phenomenon, people will try to integrate politics with it. It's just a very narrow version of it that's considered acceptable. After September 11th, we saw a particular version of American patriotism, heavy-handed symbols of Americanism, and interestingly, American military culture in particular. If you think about it, it's like, what exactly does the Air Force have to do with a football game? Game ball. Woo! Coach Bill Walsh. Yeah. In 1985-86, Bill Walsh, who was also a San Jose State graduate, brought me on to the 49ers to counsel and put together programs for athletes. He was aware of my history, so he knew what he was getting, and he said, where I want you more than anywhere else is in the locker room. We have a demographic transition coming where you have a majority blacks on the field. I want these athletes to be aware and conscious of what's going on, not just in football, but beyond, so that we can be ahead of things when they develop. For 31 years, I've had ongoing contact with every athlete that has come through there, from Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Colin Kaepernick asked me for books to read. I said, yeah, I can give you some books to read. He was just another athlete who would come to me and say, Doc, there's something I want to talk to you about. This country stands for freedom, liberty, justice for all. And it's not happening for all right now. I think that what's happened now with the current generation of athletes is that we have been inundated with video of people being killed by the police under, at best, questionable circumstances. And we've seen it again and again and again and again and again. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Put your hand behind your back. I can't breathe. 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 I
we now know that Tamir Rice was killed by one shot to the left side of his abdomen. We got pulled over for a busted tail light in the back. And the police, he's, he's covered. He ain't killed my friend. There's always been pressure, particularly from African-American communities, saying that people who had a, a platform should speak out on behalf of those communities. Between about 1974 and about 2008, there was no ideology framing up the era. There was no movement. At the end of the day, it's inevitable that these waves will come along. Why? Because it is embedded in the very cultural and historical fiber of American society. You cannot disrespect our country, our flag, our anthem. You cannot do that. There's a political calculation and there's a political profit to be reaped, whether it is the deliberate or unintentional misinterpretation of this dissent to be anti-American. I hate you! American made! American made! Furious football fans are posting videos online burning all things Kaepernick. I think, by and large, people have forgotten what this was about. It has become this issue of whether or not you respect the military as opposed to whether or not we have a system of accountability for police officers who disproportionately use lethal force against unarmed African Americans. We're all patriotic in the locker room. We love our troops. Um, this is about something bigger than that. Whenever we've seen figures articulate a critique of the society, especially African American athletes, dissent is interpreted as disloyalty. This is a presumption that black people are not supposed to be at the tier of society where they are. And they should be grateful that they've been allowed to exist on that tier. Let's be clear, that's what they are. They're arrogant young millionaires. During a meeting between players and owners last week, Bob McNair said if the league didn't stop the protest, it would be like, quote, inmates running the prison. There's a kind of overseer logic to what Donald Trump was saying. Today, if you hit too hard, right? They hit too hard, 15 yards, throw him out of the game. They're ruining the game, right? This idea that people are being treated too delicately. Meanwhile, we're seeing the horrible, lifelong repercussions of playing a very dangerous sport contingent upon keeping largely white crowds of people happy. The audience do not reflect the 80% blacks on the field. I mean, I'm watching a couple of teams this past Sunday, it looked like Ghana playing Nigeria. And it's going to get blacker owing to the concussion issue because whites are dropping out. This is a growing contradiction. This is not going to get better. It's going to become more strained. And this sophistry about, well, it's the national anthem, doesn't help to move the conversation forward. Trump knows that this isn't about disrespect for the flag and disrespect for soldiers. Trump's not disrespectful of the flag when he trashes a gold star family. He's not disrespectful of the flag and the soldiers when he trashes John McCain. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. But when Colin Kaepernick takes a knee, when Malcolm Jenkins raises a fist, they don't want to deal with that. So they say, you're disrespecting the flag. We're better than that and we have to do better. The NFL has agreed to commit $89 million over the next seven years to social justice causes considered important to the African-American community. Kaepernick remains unsigned, leaving some to suggest that he's being blackballed for his controversial protest. For the people who take these stands, it often entails a significant degree of personal sacrifice. But I think it's the thing that people do out of a sense of a broader humanity.